It was almost like... Like seeing something out of a dream. Nothing more or less than a breathtaking view. So you know how when you first learned about the hero's journey, you started seeing it everywhere? Well, I'm about to hero's journey 80% of East Asian stories. Manga, anime, films, four panel comics, character arcs, seasons, series, hell, even commercials. I've got one word for you. That word is Kisha Tenketsu. Okay, I mean, technically speaking, it's a word comprised of four words, which are ki, which means introduction, shou, which means roughly development, ten for twist, and ketsu for conclusion. And if you aren't me, and didn't have to write it 50 million times while researching for this video, you may struggle to remember the name. Here's the trick I used. Prior to my researching it so deeply, I now remember the Japanese characters for it. Ki, Sho, Ten, and Ketsu. I don't have anything clever for Ketsu. So Kisho Tenketsu is a story structure popular among writers in East Asia, most notably China, South Korea, and Japan. The structure originated in China, where it was applied to four-line poetry. From here, the story structure moved to Korea, and then finally to Japan, where it was called Kisho Tenketsu, and it started gaining recognition outside of East Asia due to its prevalent use in anime and manga. Now, when I say the structure is popular in East Asia, I need you to understand that I mean popular. Think of Kisho Tenketsu as the three-act structure of East Asia. In fact, it's so prevalent and versatile that it's taught in elementary schools as a form of sentence structure. And then it's untaught in colleges because students try to use it for presentations. And now, on to the structure itself. So first up we have Ki, which takes place in Act 1 and is the introduction phase. As the title implies, this is all about introducing the world and the characters. You'll notice that this structure does not include an inciting incident, but I regret to inform you that audiences still require a hook. So to capture audience attention in Kisho Tengetsu stories, writers will generally start with a violently compelling or hype-packed communication of tone and theme. The primary purpose of this section is to get you into the right mindset so the next stage can take deeper root. Your Name is a beautiful example of this. Super quick note, this video will contain unflagged spoilers for Your Name. If you care about that, you're gonna have to click off on your audio and walk away from your device for two to three hours so that YouTube doesn't think that you hate me. So for example, Your Name, we start out with an elegant intro which conveys the tone and heart of the story, and then we segue straight into a powerful curiosity hook that is Mitsuha being confused by her own breasts. The entirety of Keith from this point forward is Mitsuha's POV as we see snippets of her world and then Taki's as she wakes up in his body and we're thus handed the basic premise of the story. The stage ends with her writing her name on Taki's hand, which we will come back to at a later stage. That brings us to Sho, which is Act 2, Development. This stage is all about establishing biases and emotionally angering us to the focal character. If the upcoming twist requires groundwork, this is where it's buried, but there are generally no major changes to the character's world in this stage, and foreshadowing is kept very subtle. In Your Name, this section is full of montage bits to get us hyped, attached, and establish some important context. Then Mitsuha, back in her own body, watches the comet split off, and we cut to Taki who has stopped switching bodies with her. Worried about her, he sets out to find the town. After a lot of failed searching, a waitress recognizes his drawing, though her reaction inspires foreboding rather than success, and teases the cusp of a twist. Which brings us to Ten, the Act 3 twist. If you are in the majority demographic of my audience, you are a Westerner, and thus are raising your left eyebrow at the suggestion of spending your grand twist in the middle of the story. Now, what if I also told you that conflict is not essential to Key and Show and can make its first appearance here as well? 
What if I also, also told you that you can wait until this moment to reveal the core plot of your story? Rest in peace my channel because you are probably already unsubscribed and have clicked off. And I get it, as a westerner it sounds ridiculous, but here's the thing. That's exactly what many Kisho Tengetsube stories do, and they do it exceptionally well. And is it so surprising? I mean, after all, a middle can't sag if it has a tentpole of a twist jammed into it. So I'll cover the lack of conflict in a later title card, because first things first, we need to talk about the brilliance of the mid-story twist. This stage is generally meant to happen right smack in the middle of the story, and it exists to introduce chaos to turn the story on its head, hold a mirror up to the character, or flip the fundamental perspective of Ki and Sho upside down. Some East Asian diagrams depict this as a valley, while others depict it as a mountain. This is because Ten, from the character's perspective, is generally a fall from a high horse, as the flipped perspective often reveals how wrong they were in Ki and Sho. But emotionally, this section is a climax. Ketsu will then show the inverse of whatever the diagram uses for Ten, since the character rises after the fall and action falls after the climax. Then there's Westerners, who have been on one too many roller coasters and draw the diagram with this big loopy loop and I just... <laughs> I know there's no official structure, so I cannot say that these diagrams are wrong. But I think there's a reason we don't see this in East Asian graphics. Because neither the audience nor the character experiences follow a loopy pattern, and I trust you to remember there's a twist there without the flare. Especially because there are labels on the diagrams. This is called a twist, but it's important to note that this doesn't have to be on the tier of who is Tyler Durden. Although twists that bend the reality of the entire story do count, this stage can be as simple as a shift in perspective that reveals the deep-rooted biases of the focal character. The latter might not sound very exciting, but it can be extremely powerful, especially if Ki and Sho manage to make the audience adapt the same biases. And while bias targeting perspective shifts can be extremely uncomfortable, they're also deeply impactful experiences that this structure can deliver at an unparalleled level. Your name does, however, go the full the prophecy is true. Route. Starting this section with the reveal that Inamori is not only destroyed, but that the event took place three years ago. If that weren't enough, we now have real stakes, and the whole trajectory of the entire film is fundamentally changed. To add on to the mirroring and parallels, this section is entirely from Taki's POV, minus Mitsuhua waking up to discover the twist herself at the end of this section, which is inverse to what we saw in Ki. And where Ki ended with Mitsuha writing her name on Taki's hand, this stage ends with Taki writing his name on Mitsuha's hand. Which brings us to Ketsu, conclusion. So just as Ten exists to be chaos, Ketsu exists to reconcile the two perspectives and find balance between the before and the after. To put them side by side in some way and let you truly appreciate not just the whole of the world and its range of colors, but the journey and how your thought process has changed. But with that said, Ketsu doesn't have to be all falling action. Many Kishou Tengetsu stories use the twist to introduce a new problem that must be faced in this final stage. Now, your name splits into neat little, almost perfect 25% slices. And 25% is a little much to be spent on just resolving things. And so Your Name is an example of a twist introducing a greater problem, which is of course saving Itamori's people. Taki did everything he could in Ten, and so the pair meets at Magic Hour and switch places one last time. After the switch, Taki loses his memories and returns to Tokyo. Mitsuha then takes over the evacuation and confronts her father. Then the meteor hits, we cut away, and what follows is essentially an epilogue. The film then culminates in a chance meeting between Taki and Mitsuha. Now, there's a really interesting aspect to this ending, but I'm gonna address it in a few minutes because it better illustrates a later point. Now, let's cover how this structure is split up. There is no set breakdown. Some writers go for very even, clean-cut slices that you can predict down to the timestamp 
page or volume. This seems to be the most common, but I suspect that's just because it's the easiest to identify. Others put the story first, using Kisho Taketsu as a guide only so far as it exists in the back of their mind. Some East Asian writers, most notably in manga, even swear against even divisions, citing audience retention as their primary concern. And we've learned from experience that it's best not to divide into equal pieces, but put emphasis on the part where show gradually turns into the beginning of the twist. But I do believe that stories with a heavy focus on parallels and mirroring will feel more symmetrical with even pieces. And if rhythm is a core component of a story, the evenly spaced beats can really resonate with an audience. It's also worth noting that if you set out to analyze an anime and find it's almost Kisho Tenkatsu but not quite right, it may very well have been lost in adaption. Take for example Attack on Titan, where even an artful application of Kisho Tenkatsu looks… well, it looks like this. I applaud the efforts of Pause and Select, but it does make for a rough example because this story, like many animes, started as a manga, and though the anime doesn't deviate too far from the early source material, the changes are not centered around making the story more Kisho Tenketsu, but rather making the timeline linear and breaking episodes off at cliffhangers. Because of this, you'll have a much smoother time analyzing the source material, which splits perfectly down volume lines. Now, because I have ADHD and zero time management skills, I spent four full-time workdays noting down examples of Kisho Tenketsu, which I then had to cut because audience retention does not like 45 minute videos. So, if you want to see exactly how volumes 1 through 4 of the Attack on Titan manga are Kisho Tenketsu, support me on Patreon for access to scripts and that cut content. Please, for the love of Skycat. Kisho Tenketsu is often called a plot structure without conflict which is wording that I would classify as mildly unfair, but technically true. After all, you cannot say that there is no conflict in Parasite or Attack on Titan, but it is fair to classify this as a structure that does not focus on conflict. In Kishota Getsu stories, conflict is generally not personified and does not drive the plot, because the stories are not about forcefully overcoming a trial, but rather about coming to an internal understanding or state of acceptance. In fact, characters are often relatively powerless. Because of this, the negative force in the story is generally portrayed as something inevitable, to be averted or accepted rather than dominated. Or the conflict is born of unnecessary actions and goal chasing and is thus self-inflicted. And that's not to say you couldn't use the structure as a guide for a bombastic story of hero versus villain, it's just not what the structure caters to. So for example, your name has no villain. Taki and Mitsuha aren't trying to shoot the comet out of the sky or change its path because the comet is inevitable. The characters are instead trying to lessen the damage by saving those lives that they can. The other interesting aspect here is that the story ends with the characters having forgotten the body switching and their connection and everything. And so the story ends with the characters having not personally changed. Besides, you know, Mitsuha not being dead, which you could argue is a little bit of a change. And yet, they perfectly match Kishou Tengetsu, because Kishou Tengetsu does not require character arcs. Which brings us to stories that benefit from Kishou Tengetsu. In other words, who should you share this video with? So there are a lot of strengths to the structure, but I think the most notable ones are as follows. Firstly, character studies and deep explorations of bias and experiences. Because of the perspective flip and the whole beat set aside to really untangle and explore the implications of that shift, from the mundane and realistic to the goalless and conflictless, this structure is wonderful for writers who want to explore biases 
empathy, and truly show the whole of a character inside and out. Next up, we have unreliability, fear, and uncertainty. The midpoint twist not only makes for a huge boost in tension, but also casts the whole first part of the story in a new light, helping to overwhelm the audience and push them to even deeper levels of anxiety. And then we have stories with unconventional endings. Sad, bittersweet, it was all a dream, everyone dies at the end, nothing changes. These types of endings will frustrate less of the audience in stories that are about the journey or what the audience learns, which Kishal Taketsu does extremely well. Then we have brevity. Some writers really like structures that are short, vague, and wide open to interpretation. Enough guidance that their story doesn't come out looking like a drunken improv session, but enough freedom that they don't fear the dreaded cookie cutter label. Outside of the three act structure, you won't find an option more short and sweet than Kisha Tenketsu. At the end of the day, I think the most important aspect of Kisha Tenketsu is that it's not about the change of the characters, but rather the change in the audience. And that was it for this video! Become a patron if you want access to those examples, and thank you so much for watching. As always, I will see you in the next video. So